What we are going to be discussing today is circular motion at an angle. In order to really have a look into this, we're going to imagine that we have two different situations. First of all, we have a car turning on a level road, and we also have a car turning on a banked surface. Now, unfortunately, my artistic skills are not quite up to scratch, so we're going to have to imagine that the car is just represented by this box. Well, let's imagine all the forces acting in the two cases by producing two free body diagrams. Let's start off with the car turning on a level road first of all. There's going to be a few forces acting. The first force that we're going to draw in will be the force due to gravity, which is the weight. This will be acting straight down and this will be a vector we can call that let's say w now opposing that will be the normal reaction and should we just call that r which will be acting in the opposite direction and let's make sure that there are arrows on these two in those cases though those two forces are exactly the same but acting in opposite direction Additionally, because the car is turning, we need something else to make it turn, to push it towards the center. And this will be a centripetal force. We can call that just F or F subscript C, just to show that there is a centripetal force along there. So if the car is turning, there has to be a centripetal force. So that means that there will be an unbalanced force in one direction, i.e. the car will be turning to the right. Just to summarize, we have three forces. We have the normal contact force, which is acting directly upwards. This balances out the weight force, which is acting straight down, and we have a centri centripetal force acting to the right. Now, let's have a look at a free body diagram of a banked surface. So we have a car, which is once again turning to the right. However, this time the surface is banked. Now, in this case, the weight will still be acting straight down. Remember, weight always acts straight down. So the W vector will be acting this way like so and we can call this vector w now the normal reaction in this case will be acting at um, 90 degrees to the surface this is the way normal reaction always acts and this is quite important so in this case, we need to make sure that the angle between the normal reaction itself and the surface is 90 degrees. So this will look like so. In fact, let's just use a different color just to visualize this a little bit better for the normal reaction. Okay, now um, something quite interesting follows. This normal reaction will actually have two components. It's going to have a vertical component and it will also have a horizontal component. So let's resolve this normal reaction R into those two components. Here are those two components. The vertical one I'm just going to call Ry. So this one here will be Ry and the horizontal one I'm just going to call this one R. X. Now, something is really, really interesting. If the car is not slipping on the road, in other words, if it's not moving up and down, then Ry will have to be equal to the weight and also because of that to mg. So Ry is going to equal mg and um, additionally, Rx will be the component which actually is providing the centripetal force to turn uh, to the to the right. So this is the only unbalanced component, and the actual normal reaction is providing that turning force directed towards the center of rotation. So Rx will be equal to mv squared over r. We can simplify this even further. 
And um, if you look at similar triangles, you can prove that this angle here is also theta. The proof is not required for the exam, so I'm not going to go for it. However, you can um, have some fun with the similar triangles and prove this yourselves. Now, because of this angle here is theta as well, that means that sine of theta is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse, which means that the opposite of this one is Rx and the hypotenuse in this case is equal to r. So this means that rx will be r sine theta. So rx is actually r sine theta and um, ry by using the cosine component in exactly the same way. So cosine theta will be the adjacent over the hypotenuse so in this case, the adjacent to theta is Ry. So that's going to equal Ry divided by R. So this means that Ry will be R cosine theta. So Rx and Ry are actually going to be uh, R sine theta and R cos theta. So another way of writing those balanced equations will be the following. Rather than Rx, I could write R sine theta is equal to mv squared over R. And rather than Ry, what I could write is R cos theta is equal to mg. Notice that these can be a little bit counterintuitive because in many, many problems, cos theta is the horizontal component. But in this case, because the angle that we're given is here, the uh, adjacent is actually the vertical component. So the vertical component balances out mg. And we can even represent this the following way. So the, those two components got to be equal like so. The unbalanced component Rx, this provides our centripetal force. Those two equations are the two really, really important equations in, um, in circular motion at an angle. And almost any time we have to solve a question in which we have circular motion at an angle, we have to use this equation. Just to know that it's not always the uh, contact force, the normal reaction force R, which uh, is in the question. It could well be that, but it could also be the lift force. It could also be the force of tension in a conical pendulum, or it could be a, uh, another force uh, that comes up in an exam question. Okay, folks, so let's apply everything that we've learned so far to a past paper question from OCR June 2014. We have a jet which is performing horizontal circular motion at an angle, and that angle is 35 degrees to the vertical. We can see the direction of the lift force across here, and we can see that the jet is moving at a speed of... 86 meters per second show that the magnitude of the force L is about 74 kilonewtons when the mass of the jet is 6200 kilograms. This will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video and attempt this question. Okay, so let's have a look at the solution. Now, the first thing that we need to do is resolve L into two components. So we're going to draw them, first of all. This will be our Lx component, the horizontal component. This is the opposite component to 35 degrees. So this one here will be L sine of 35. And also there's going to be a vertical component which will be acting directly upwards like so. And this will be balancing out the weight and uh, this will be the adjacent component, so this will be L cosine of 35 degrees. Now we can clearly see that those two components have got to balance out. In other words, this component 
will better be equal to this component if the jet will not be moving in the vertical direction at all, which we know that it's not because it's moving in a pure horizontal circle as they have highlighted up there. Okay, well, let's set those two components equal to one another. So um, I'm just going to write down that uh, L cosine of 35 degrees is going to equal to the weight which is equal to mg so l cos of 35 is equal to mg all i need to do then is just rearrange for l so i can just write down that l will be mg divided by cosine of 35 so the mass of the jet is 6200 the acceleration on planet earth is 9.81 meters per second per second and i'm going to divide that by the cosine of 35 degrees and if i input those values into a scientific calculator i'm going to get 74249 which up to two significant figures is approximately 74000 newtons which is well which is equal to 74 kilonewtons now let's have a look at the last part of this question which is asking us to calculate the radius r now notice that uh, we've not actually used the horizontal component let me just highlight that so we can highlight that in yellow the horizontal component has not been used at all and this component is what is providing the turning force for this aircraft to to turn so this will be equal to the centripetal force so let's uh, let's just set that equal to the centripetal force so L sine of 35 degrees is going to equal mv squared divided by r and all we need to do then is just literally rearrange for the uh, for the radius so all we need to do is swap l sine 35 and r and this will be perfectly rearranged so r will be mv squared divided by l sine of 35 degrees just like that and what we need to do then is make sure we substitute all the values correctly so the mass of the aircraft is 6200 so 6200 multiplied by the speed which in this question is given to be 86 meters so b times 86 squared and I'm going to divide by L. We already found the value of L, which is uh, 74,000, or which will be 7.4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 4, multiplied by the sine of 35 degrees. If I was to put these values into a scientific calculator, I'm going to get uh, 1,080, or up to two significant figures, which is what we're working with in this question. This will be 1.1 times 10 to the power of 3 meters. So the radius of turning is about 1,100 meters or 1.1 kilometers. Okay folks, so hopefully uh, circular motion at an angle now makes sense. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video as well. If there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.